The moms that I have around me were telling me, oh, I'm just sleeping. I was like, what's wrong with me? Why am I not like everyone else? And there are a lot of people around me who had an easy postpartum. And I was like, oh, maybe I'm just not meant for this. I made a big mistake and the insomnia. And I was just very, very harsh on myself. Just thinking like, I'm a bad mom. This is not for me. I made a mistake. I was constantly judging myself on some nights where I wasn't sleeping. I was like, oh, what's wrong with you? Why are you so anxious? Why are you so preoccupied? Why are you this? When I found about the program, I just decided that insomnia wasn't going to ruin my life and that I was going to show up as my best possible self on that day uh, for my loved ones. Courage and being brave are very important for the recovery and just going against whatever voices you hear in your head. If you hear that you're not capable, you are. It's ev everything that you think, the reality is the opposite during the insomnia journey. Hi everyone and welcome to another really special Talk Insomnia episode. We have Rashad with us. Welcome. Hello, thank you for having me. Anytime. Uh, it's really nice seeing you back. And for those of you, don't, those in the audience who don't know you, Rashad, um, I'll just say to, to everyone that you are part of our Insomnia Immunity Program. And I remember you from several calls there. And it, again, nice reconnecting with you. And yeah, tell us in your words, what, uh, you know, how did you start having trouble sleeping? Okay. So now that I understand insomnia um, quite well, I can tell that. Um, it was inevitable, actually, <laughs> now that I know how I was before. Um, I've always been very protective of my sleep, always needed the dark to be the room to be super dark, um, always needed complete silence. Um, even uh, after getting married, I wasn't sharing bed with my husband because I wanted my own space. So I feel like I was already in, uh, you know, setting myself up for insomnia in a way. Um, and uh, when I got pregnant, it was actually kind of the beginning because um, with my husband, we were already talking about arrangement to make sure that I sleep. So I feel like this built up to then giving birth and then postpartum where everything started. Um, so I had uh, what we could call like a traumatic birth. Um, and I think you know, in a way, giving birth is kind of like a traumatic experience anyway. So um, it was quite difficult. And if uh, birth takes a long time, then it's very hard to sleep because it's painful. Um, and if labor goes on for hours and hours, then I don't think many women sleep <laughs> during that time. Um, high levels of cortisol, adrenaline, all of these um, chemistry going on in the body. Um, that just creates a natural hyper arousal and it's perfectly normal. And I wish someone told me then what's happening to you is normal. Um, so obviously I'm focusing on the birth in that moment. So nothing happening with the sleep. Um, and after giving birth, those levels of cortisol and adrenaline are not settling down. So I'm not sleeping for like four or five days in a row at the hospital. Um, so then at that time, I'm not questioning it or anything. I'm just focused on the baby, on the feedings, and I'm not really, you know, the nurses are interrupting every like 10, 15 minutes, half an hour. So I'm like, okay, it's normal. I'm being disrupted all the time. Um, and I know how I am with sleep. Like I need to be left alone. Um, so in that specific moment, I'm still not in the struggle, but kind of like, um, it's kind of building up, kind of like building up to, um, where it's going to be later. Um, so then I come back home from the hospital and I just feel like palpitations. I'm just like uh, super anxious, which is again, completely normal first time parents. Um, and some people have an easier time with it, but I just was very anxious. Um, and this led to, um, having a very hard time resting, not resting. If someone told me just rest, I think I would have been fine. Um, but I kept hearing right, left, center, you have to sleep. You have to sleep to recover. You have to sleep to feel better. You have to sleep, sleep when the baby sleeps. Like this is the most stupid advice ever. Um, 
and I've never been a napper. And I'm like, all right, right now my baby is not sleeping at night. Uh, she's sleeping through the day. So how am I supposed to sleep through the day? I've never slept during the day in my life. Like I've never been a napper. I've always been like super active during the day. Um, so I was trying to sleep. I was trying to sleep when she was sleeping and it was not happening. In at that time, I don't feel like the fear was there yet because I know that I'm not a napper. So, but then in the evening, no one also told me that babies make noise when they're newborn. Um, and as like their sleep is very active. So they're moving during their sleep. They're making a lot of noises. And me who needs like full silence suddenly in the room with a baby that is constantly making noises and waking up every two hours, I just couldn't sleep. Um, so again, at that time, there is not really any fear or anything. You know, I was ending up falling asleep, sleeping like three hours um, here and there. So, but for me, that was like, the fear was building up, but it wasn't there yet. Um, I was oh, about- and, and Rochelle, sorry yeah. to interrupt, but just so we have an idea, like uh, roughly how long ago is this? Uh, this was in May. So uh, my daughter- Like about, was, about a year ago. Yeah, a year ago. Yeah, okay, okay. My daughter was born on the 16th of May. Her birthday is in a week. Oh, yeah. Um, and um, this was like, we're talking now like a month and a half postpartum. My mom came to help me um, at the very beginning. And when she left, my anxiety just rise. And um, when she left, I had my full first night of um, not sleeping at all. So, and I couldn't understand what was happening. Um, my daughter started sleeping a bit more, like larger blocks without waking up. So I started like trying to align my sleep with hers. Everyone was like, oh, when she goes to bed, just go to bed so you can get your eight hours. You know, I just wish like no one said nothing. Um, but in a way, like, I feel like it had to happen. I'll come to that uh, later. Um, but yeah, that's basically my first night not sleeping at all. And I was in bed, like freaking out. And I woke my husband up and I was like, I don't know what's going on. I can't sleep. And he was like, oh, I think you should just need, I just, you just need to take deep breaths. I think you're not breathing properly. I'm like, I never questioned my, <laughs> my breath like how I was breathing in my sleep ever in my life how is suddenly this happening so um yeah I think this is when it all started and then a week later my husband was like okay I think you need to rest you need some sleep I'm gonna take the baby uh for like four hours so you can just wake up to feed her in four hours and you stay in the room alone because he knew that um, I would sleep better without her next to me making noises and stuff. And again, second night of uh, not sleeping at all. And from there, that's it. The um, uh, sleeping teas started and melatonin and magnesium. And I went to the GP only once and I never truly believed that they knew what was going on. Um, so I went to my GP once and they were like, oh, I think you suffer from postpartum anxiety, um, but we can't give you any medication because you're breastfeeding. So we're just gonna give you like light stuff, you know, that you can take. Um, sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. I just like knew something was off with everything that the GP was saying and, now what that I think about it, I don't know how much of my postpartum anxiety was uh, related to sleep and how much was really related to having a new baby. It doesn't matter, but <laughs> I think um, is the anxiety coming from not sleeping or is it really coming from becoming a new parent? And is it really the, if it was like fully related to parenting, I don't think it would have affected my sleep for so long because um, it was quite obvious like three months later when I became very comfortable with the baby I didn't have anxiety towards her anymore and I was still not sleeping I was like no this doesn't make sense it can't be it yeah 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 wow wow thanks for sharing this and uh after those like two nights where you didn't sleep uh yes. you know, how, how were things after that were you 
kind of constantly thinking about sleep at this point, or you were still like the, the you know worried, uh, you know the worries were kind of shared between the baby and being a mom or sleep, or or what was it like? Oh, that's it. I was obsessed. I was obsessed with sleep at that point. Um, I was trying different things. I was researching nonstop um, what is postpartum uh, insomnia about because it's like classified as its own thing somehow. Um, and I've kind of um, found that it could be related to a hormonal imbalance. Um, that it could be a lack of um, magnesium, uh, that when you kind of fabricate the baby in your body, you lose a lot of minerals and stuff like that, and it impacts, it can impact your sleep postpartum. And I have a lot of people around me who had babies, and I'm asking them, and they're like, no, we didn't have this. So I'm like, surely if it's a hormonal imbalance, it should affect like at least half of the people I know who are parents now, but, um, it wasn't the case. So I was like, okay, maybe I'm a very rare case of like hormonal imbalance in fact, impacting the sleep. I spent, I can't even tell you how much I spent, uh, how much money I spent on, you know, supplements and teas and like pills and even a program about rebalancing hormones um, after birth. And this program also claimed that this postpartum insomnia is happening because of this. Um, so tried everything, um, and yeah. You know, how did you like, and, and what was your, you know, your nights obviously were, um, choppy. Like what was it, was it mostly that you had these kind of nights where you barely slept or was it like a long time for tr uh, trouble, like falling asleep or staying asleep or a mix of both or what were the nights like? I, I feel like I went through everything. Um, I had all the different patterns. Uh, I had the pendulum pattern where I had like, this was in September, I remember very well. One night I would sleep seven, eight hours. One night I wouldn't sleep at all. This went on for like three weeks, I think. Um, then most of the time I would fall asleep easily and I would wake up at three um, and I wouldn't fall back asleep after that. Um, and also when I was researching about postpartum insomnia, it said it's not a matter of concern until the baby starts sleeping through the night. And then baby started sleeping through the night and when I was still waking up at three. I was like, oh, maybe my brain is now wired to wake up at three because that was the time where I was feeding her. I was like, it will fade away, but no, it didn't. Uh, a month later, I was still having exactly the same pattern. and um everything that comes with it like waking up scared uh but at the time i didn't understand that it was fear um waking up anxious palpitations uh, just like strange sensations in the body um yeah i've lost also a lot of weight um yeah, you did yes i i've lost about seven kilograms um yeah just because you, you, so you didn't have any appetite like you didn't feel like I eating. didn't have any appetite breastfeeding burns a lot of calories um it wasn't good because I had to eat well to have like uh, you know the energy to feed my baby and stuff and I think this was freaking me out as well um I was like I'm not sleeping I'm not eating that's it I'm, I'm gonna die and I was actually in the mind space that I was gonna die I started like writing down if I die how do I send my daughter to my mom uh, who's going to take care of her. I was just obsessed with that idea that that's it. That's the end for me. And, uh, and yeah, I don't know why I'm smiling. It's not like now that I think about it, it just sounds so stupid. But at the time I was really in that like, um, mentality of like, I thought that was the end. Um, and yeah, I was constantly yeah. in panic mode. Wow. And, and did you, were you, um, uh, you know, uh, like a full-time mom at this point or did you have like a job to go back to or no no I, I was lucky enough um that I didn't have to go back to work um but I still felt this huge pressure of responsibility um thinking if I'm not resting how am I going to take care of my daughter um and it was I was very very and I, th I think this increased my anxiety towards taking care of her because I was like have to be very careful what if I dropped I drop her now I don't have any energy what if like 
I don't know, like, what if I just fall asleep in the middle of the day and she's playing around or, you know, I was constantly having those questions. Um, it never happened, <laughs> but I, it's just like, it's it's just a crazy experience. Yeah. Wow. All right. Now you, you've given us a very clear picture of, uh, you know, this difficult and, and very, you know, high anxiety stretch of time. And, and so, you know, you had your baby in May and, you know, in September you were having these penguin patterns, et cetera. And for how long did this kind of period of just like confusion and no clue what's going on and anxiety, how long did that last? I think from early June, I would say, I would say even like last week of May, it didn't happen like straight away after birth. I would say early June um, to early September when I found your channel um but I found a CBTI program before um, I, was, I was just gonna ask about that if you came across yeah. that yeah tell us about that yeah oh my god the disaster um you know sometimes I was feeding my baby in bed and even that would freak me out because obviously CBTI encourages us to if like if we're not sleeping we're just not in bed so i had my baby sleeping in the moses basket next to me and i bought this basket for the purpose of feeding my baby easy, e easier in bed um and i would get up to like feed her and then on the next day i was like this is not su sustainable i can't do this like it's already tiring enough feeding in the middle of the night um how am I gonna do that every day? It's not possible. And even if I wasn't sleeping, some days I wasn't feeling, um, I was in a really high state of anxiety and just resting in bed would help me. So I was like, okay, if I don't even have those moments now, that's it. Like I can't do, I can't do it. I can't, <laughs> I can't do this feeding thing. I can't do this parenting thing. Um, I think it lasted about, I've done a full week just to see um, if it was going to change anything or and I contacted the person who was selling this program saying I'm day seven in the program how comes things are worse now <laughs> so I was just just scared of like sitting on the bed to like get dressed like put my socks on or something I, everything like just touching the bed was just creating a really high hyper arousal um, and I was avoiding bed like crazy I didn't want to go to bed at night I was just like walking towards the bedroom with like super high anxiety what's gonna happen tonight um, and then yeah I, I don't think I gave it a try for long uh, after I would say 10 days I realized that I wasn't capable I couldn't yeah. do that yeah totally here and uh is this is this around this time that they find the channel like uh and, and yes. how did you find it yeah so after 10 days uh of cbti and i think while i was in the program i was still researching and i can't remember how i came across uh, your channel i can't remember if it was like a search on youtube or a search of just like a google search i can't remember but the moment i heard it's the fear of being awake, fear of not sleeping. I was like, that's it. It makes so much sense now. I understand why I'm panicking. I understood, like, it was very clear, very quickly. Um, now for the subconscious to catch up with all the information, it needs a bit of time, but um, I had a very clear picture of what was happening. I still had a bit of doubts with the hormonal situation and stuff, but it quickly faded away um after a few uh coaching sessions but um yeah just being in then i signed up to the immunity program uh being on slack and seeing that everyone was going through the exact same thing we might all be different in different situations but our insomnia is the same we all go through the same thing we all feel the same way um we all have the same kind of ways to control our sleep um, when we're in the middle of it. Um, it was very surprising to me because during uh, the storm of insomnia, I also had like the belief that 
I can sleep only if I'm wearing certain pajamas. And I'm like, how is another person on the other side of the world having the exact same belief? So it was just very strange to find people who um, have the same beliefs, as crazy as they sound. Um, but we don't realize that they're crazy when we're in the middle of, uh, of the insomnia struggle. Um, but yeah, it was just very reassuring to see that, OK, I'm not alone. Um, and also some women were postpartum. So I was like, OK, it's really not a hormonal thing. We're all going through the same thing, postpartum or not. It's the same experience. So it brought a lot of uh, reassurance. Yeah, that's so, so great to hear this. And um, I, you know, often or sometimes at least like just just the clarity that you had very quickly, like you realized, OK, this really is all comes from kind of a fear of not sleeping that alone can lead to some, you know, some reassurance, a little bit of anxiety can yeah. fade. But did that happen for you? And and how did how did things start getting easier for you? How did that look like? Uh, the first thing I've done is I'm like, OK, I have my answer, so I'll stop looking. I'll stop looking for any, even if you have doubts right now, you have evidence in front of you that um, it is actually the fear of being awake. A lot of people are going through it. A lot of people have recovered. Then I've started looking um, the testimonials on your YouTube channel. I was like, okay, we're all going through the same experience. And I kind of like sometimes had the thoughts that maybe I might be different. Maybe my case is different, but I got to a point where I choose not to believe um, what kind of thoughts were going through my head. Uh, so the first thing I've done was that um, just stop researching. You have your answer. This is it. Just, you know, uh, follow whatever the coaches are saying, um, you know, just do your best. Um, I like the concept of Coach Alina about the fearless uh, sleep, just like challenging everything um, that I was doing to control my sleep. So uh, I was avoiding coffee in the afternoon. This came very slowly. It was like a step-by-step -step, uh, process. But yeah, I started having my coffee in the afternoon and I think I realized that on the days that I had coffee, I was sleeping. And on some days that I didn't have coffee, I wasn't sleeping, so I realized that it wasn't correlated. But I think someone like suffering from insomnia has to go through everything and see it uh, and experience it to really believe it. Um, and yeah, I, I challenged a lot of things, not exercising in the evening. I was avoiding uh, exercising in the evening. Everything that I read on the Internet really like to have a good sleep. Uh, I challenged everything. <laughs> so this helped a lot again it took time and again like sometimes i was doing it and i was super anxious having my coffee and super anxious exercising but i was like okay just show your brain that uh, all of this is not true um and then things started getting easier about like two months ago i would say but um it was a long process of just constantly challenging the beliefs and the thoughts and um learning to let go of thoughts and let go of feelings and all of that didn't come very easily because we've never been taught how to do that um and i think insomnia is a blessing in disguise uh it teaches you i mean combined with <laughs> the acceptance therapy um it is i think a very unique situation to be in and to uh, learn how to challenge the mind, how the mind works and how to um, process and deal with emotions. Um, I've never been in a situation like this before. And I didn't believe during the journey that it was going to work for me. Um, but I was like, that's all I have. So I'm just going to stick to it. Um, and in the end, it did work. Yeah. Wow. So glad it did. And, and uh, it's it's interesting, like in my mind, like you were you graduated, like you, you graduated the program like, you know, a year ago, but it was actually not that long ago. Uh, it was it was no, you, it wasn't, no. it, was it was it maybe like four or five months ago or something like that? Uh, yeah, in February. Yeah, in February. Yeah. OK. And uh, now uh, did you like sleep wise, um, you know, you and I and and everyone who's gone through the program and are familiar with our ways, we know that 
you know, it's not really about sleep, you know, it's like you can actually sleep little and, and feel well and, and you can feel yes. free. But everyone, a lot of people who are listening to this will are going to want to hear about this and are curious about this. So for the sake of the community, uh, I'm, I'm going to ask you, like, um, sleep wise, when did start th things change there? And was it kind of like little by little get easier? Or did you have those like magical moments or what was that like? I had a few magical moments. Um a very short time after starting the program where I was convinced I was not going to sleep. And then I slept uh, some nights were like this. Um, I had a few aha moments as well, uh, listening to the podcasts and through a bit of like coaching and uh, just interacting with other people. Uh, things started changing, I would say. Honestly, I don't know, but <laughs> I think about I think about a month ago, um, where I started having longer stretches uh, of uh, of sleep, longer uh, blocks of like multiple nights, um, and I think this was after a coaching session with Coach Veronica, uh, and after that I had like a couple of nights where I didn't sleep well or like I really felt the hyper arousal and stuff. But I was kind of like, so what? Like, that's it now. I survived the worst. You know, <laughs> what can happen now is just another night. I know this feeling. Um, I'm not going to die from it. Um, I never left um, my bed during the, the entire uh, journey. And the last time the anxiety showed up, I was like, okay, for next time I'm planning. And if this happens again, I'm just going to go through like whatever Netflix show that I wished I had time to to watch this year because I was really busy with the baby, like first year of a baby is exhausting. So I was just like, OK, I'm going to take a bit of time for myself this time. Um, maybe that's the last thing that I have to do to like overcome insomnia, just get out of bed and do something nice for myself and stuff. And the moment I started thinking like this, I started sleeping. So I didn't even do it. So <laughs> I was just like, OK, now I have a plan. Um, if the hyper arousal shows up again, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to watch The Office. I'm going to watch this. I'm going to watch that. And I didn't have even the occasion to do it. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, I heard that so many times. And like for those people <laughs> listening, it's like you can't it can't, you know, it can't be a trick. It can't be like, oh, I'm going to plan to do this now so I will sleep. It has yeah. to be honest, right? If, when, but yes. when you're truly like, you know, if I wake up tonight and I'm really anxious, you know what? I'm going to have some time for myself and I really look forward to doing this. And when that happens, then, you know, we're no longer afraid of it. And then, you know, we never yes. have to do those things. It's, it's, I heard it many times. Yeah. I want to ask you, um, uh, you know, you sharing that, before you became a mom, before the, uh, you know, the, the birth of your, or your daughter, you had actually always been a, uh, a, a person who is sort of protective around sleep, you know, right. And, and has, uh, you know, has, has that changed at this point or how, how do you think about that? Uh, I feel like I'm, I'm much more easygoing. Um, the reason why, um, so at the beginning of our marriage, my husband and I were sleeping together and then we had the opportunity in a bigger house to sleep separately and we chose to do so um, just because we both slept better. But um, now I still like when he comes, he's, we're sleeping together again now. And when he comes to bed uh, much later than me, it wakes me up, but I'm not bothered anymore. It used to bother me. Um, it used to bother me to have a light sleep. It used to bother me to be woken up by anything and everything. And now it's fine. Like I wake up, I just fall back asleep. Um, the baby's waking me up a lot. Uh, I used to be woken up at the very uh, beginning of the, the journey. Uh, I used to be woken up and then not be able to sleep uh, again after that. And now it's like, I can't even, I don't even know, like when, like how long it takes for me to fall back asleep. I, I don't know, um, but I'm falling back asleep again. And um, something I forgot to say before also is like things started changing after like obviously challenging the fears and stuff. But also I come to a stage, I came to a stage where I was tired of monitoring. I was so obsessed with how many hours 
of sleep I had. Um, and I was constantly checking when I was waking up, I was checking the time and I was doing the maths in my head, even to the minute. Sometimes I would be like, I slept four hours and 20 minutes. I slept, like I, I wasn't even like I was just very obsessed with it. Uh, ditching the clock helped a lot. But again, it took time to get used to it. Um, and at the beginning, I was still like trying to find out even from the sunlight, like I think it's close to four, you know, but um, yeah, that faded away as well. Yeah. Well, wow, wonderful. All right. Now, um, I want to ask you two more things. And one is um, if you could, you know, travel back in time to that, that you know, maybe June when things were really difficult. Uh, and, and if you could share something with yourself that you th thought might be helpful, what would you what would you tell yourself? when everyone all the moms that i have around me were telling me oh i'm just sleeping i was like what's wrong with me why am i not like everyone else um there are a lot of people around me who had an easy postpartum and i was like oh maybe i'm just not meant for this i made a big mistake i think it impacted a lot my relationship with um i mean the baby doesn't really know what's going on but like it's just uh i, I wish the first months were more about like focusing on the connection with the baby and just but like it's much better now um i didn't know any better so you know first time and um and the insomnia and i was just very very harsh on myself just thinking like i'm a bad mom this is not for me i made a mistake i was constantly judging myself on some nights where i wasn't sleeping i was like oh what's wrong with you why are you so anxious why are you so preoccupied why are you this why are you? i was constantly challenging like why am I feeling this way um, instead of just like accepting it and saying it's okay, it's, you know, it's your first time, you don't know what you're doing, uh, you're a bit anxious, you know, just like a bit of um, more kindness. Um, yeah, yeah, that, that's that's wonderful you brought that up because I, I actually had another question for you that it slipped my mind, now it came back to me, and you sort of already kind of answered it, but yeah. I want to say this, that... Um, Par parents of small children, I think maybe more moms than dads, but parents in mm -hmm. general, but maybe again, I hear this a lot from moms yeah. and, and they're saying something like, listen, how, how can I, like, I'm, I feel a lot of, uh, I feel very guilty because mm -hmm. if I'm not sleep sleeping enough, I can't be a good mom or a good partner or a good friend, something like yeah. that. Yeah. What would you say to someone who has that, those, uh, you know, worries? Uh, that's what I thought at the beginning, um, but very, very quickly when I found about the program, I just decided that insomnia wasn't going to ruin my life um, and that I was going to show up as my best possible self on that day uh, for my loved ones. So I stopped cancelling plans. I stopped. I traveled to France many times to my parents. Um, I was freaking out about the idea of traveling. Um, I just like, I think courage and being brave are very important for the recovery um, and just going against whatever voices you hear in your head. Um, if you hear that you're not capable, you are. It's ev everything that you think. The reality is the opposite during the insomnia journey. Um, and just by showing up you'll just teach your brain that you can show up even if you had three hours two hours one hour sleep um and the baby only feels the love but doesn't know that you're tired <laughs> doesn't know that uh, you know you're not 100 percent today it doesn't know that um you know all of these things that we worry about i think a lot of people around us don't even notice um let alone a baby. <laughs> so uh, just stop worrying about that. I know it's very easy to say, but at some point, just by challenging the behavior of like constantly showing up as your be best self uh, for your family and friends, you will realize that it's not impacting the relationships that much. Yeah, yeah, well said, wow. All right, and finally, um, have you found that you know what you learned through this journey has been helpful in other areas of life or do you foresee it being helpful in other areas of life definitely i know like everyone says that but 
I just texted my husband this morning. I can't believe this happened to me. I feel so blessed. I just feel like it's a big, big blessing in this guy. It's really hard to see when you're in the middle of it, but I don't consider myself like fully, fully recovered. I still have some thoughts about sleep. And like yesterday I was in bed. I was like, what if I don't sleep, but I slept. Yeah, like um, it's just like <laughs> these like still a bit of like uh, nasty <laughs> voices in, in my head, just uh, trying to scare me. But now I know that it's not, it's just thoughts. They're not harmful. Uh, they're not gonna do anything to me. And um, I think once you know that, there is nothing that can go against it so even if you think you're not going to sleep you're going to sleep uh and you know w once you've overcame it it's really you're back to yourself but to a better version of yourself um i feel very different from how i was before insomnia i think being a mom also contributed to that um there's a lot of growth in this journey and there is a lot of wisdom gained um, and it's just like the best lesson someone can go through. Um, and honestly, I know, like when I was in the middle of it and I was hearing that, I was like, oh, I'm sick of this. <laughs> it can't be, but it is, it is. And, um, you can't force recovery. It will just happen when your brain has kind of like put all the pieces together and there is nothing left to feed the fear. Um, and yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I was kind of just nodding and listening to what you're saying. And I was like, I have nothing to add. You said it so wonderfully. So I'll just say uh, thank you for, for being back here, Rashad, sharing with the community uh, and, um, uh, and please be in touch. It was super nice uh, to see you today. Bye for now. Hi there, Coach Dial here, and I hope you thoroughly enjoyed the video that you just saw. If you are finding yourself thinking a lot about what your life would be like if you weren't struggling with sleep, if you had bandwidth for everything else in life that you want to do, if you felt like yourself again, if you didn't even give the night a second thought, well, then I have news for you. Leaving the struggle is actually so much easier than we often think. Everything that you need truly is out here on our channel in our free content. The one thing that can be tricky though is that sometimes you don't really see where you are not contextualizing the teachings to yourself. And what also can be tricky is that it can feel a bit lonely and isolating to leave the struggle on your own. If this applies to you, then head over to thesleepcoachschool.com because we have programs where you can join a community of people that are leaving the struggle, which is led by coaches who have already done so. And so if this, again, sounds like something you'd be interested in, head over to our, our website, thesleepcoachschool.com and check out our Insomnia Immunity Program. And if you decide to join, we can't wait to see you on the other side.